Right, so where are we up to? I've upgraded the clutch springs and I've got the bigger injectors in it and I've been messing about mapping injectors and I've got them mapped pretty sweet now. It's a lot richer on idle and a very, very light throttle, which I can't really seem to get out with the tune, but that's probably a thing with running the bigger injectors. So I might be able to sort that out a bit better when I get it on a dyno, because there'll be someone with me who knows a lot more than me when I do that. But it, it runs sweet, it's not a problem, and I have got the oxygen sensors disconnected, so maybe when I connect them back up again, it might alter that a little bit. So, right, what's next? Next is, I'm gonna put a plenum chamber on it. This guy, this guy here, the plenum chamber, which I believe would just go just underneath the throttle bodies and it will have a couple of U pipes going up to it. I'm doing this first because I can actually put the plenum chamber on and even the pipe work and even the intercooler and still run it without the supercharger on it. So doing it this way, if I run into any problems, it's not going to be a problem because I can still use a bike. If I go right ahead and start bolting everything on together and I run into problems, the bike's probably going to be off the road. So that's why we're doing this first. Oh, and also, I've polished the machining marks out of the case, the cases. So I have filmed that. I don't know if you would have seen the video about that yet or not, but that is, I'm showing you how I do that too. So, Let's stick this plenum chamber on. Oh, and the other thing was, I sorted out insurance for it today. And basically, this is something you need to think about when you do a modification like that. I've actually got to pay twice as much now, which is pretty much what I thought it was gonna be. So that's not too bad, but that's an agreed value with all the modification listed and everything. And also, if the bike gets written off, I've got the opportunity to buy it back. So <laughs> if that ever happens, I'd be able to build a race bike out of it or something like that, I don't know. But at least I'd have all my bits and pieces still, if they're still in one piece. But it's not gonna come to that. So let's put this plenum chamber on. Right, the first thing I just discovered I've got to do is I've got to take off these fake float bowls so that the plenum chamber actually fits underneath. And of course, the ignition switch. But there's a bracket which goes on the end of the plenum chamber. There, which holds this, I believe. I've seen that, so this shouldn't be a problem. So I've actually had to move the ignition switch from down here somewhere to, to here because you get that bracket to fit it. The wires were a little bit of a stretch, but they work. But you can use the original rubber mounts and stuff, so it's pretty good. It's just a little bit close to the cylinder head, though. I might make a heat shield there for it. But my dear, there's electric bits and pieces all over the engine. It should be all right. And there's a locating bolt for it there as well. You have to take the old bolt out and replace that with a longer bolt. That fits rather nicely in there, look. And there's just some silicon boost hose, which I've got cut. So it fits there, nice to go from there to there. The dump valve or blow off valve, whatever you want to call it, is in there. Um, I'm gonna have to actually take that off and get a different sort or think up something else because it's not actually legal in this country to vent your blow off valve into open air which is a bloody stupid rule really, because it's only air. It hasn't got any fuel in it. It's not as if it's an engine crankcase breather either. It hasn't got any fumes in it. It might be a noise thing, I'm not sure. And then that boost hose connects up with a silicon elbow. It goes down to the intercooler, which mounts on the front there like that. Right, so. That pipe works all a bit close to the exhaust there and the air filter as well. So what I might do is I might actually put some exhaust wrap on it. I was trying to avoid that because it's a really nice finish on these pipes, but 
I don't really want to be drawing in warm air. I need to get this little guy in. This is a voltage clamp and I think what it does is it stabilizes the voltage for the map sensor so that when it's under boost it doesn't get a big spike and put an error on, something like that. But anyway, that's got to be wired into the map sensor. Right, just above the engine here, just bolted to the frame there, that's the actual map sensor, which is that plug there. It's got a vacuum line that goes to the throttle bodies. MAP stands for Manifold Absolute Pressure. So it basically measures the pressure in the, in the manifold. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the voltage clamp, we're going to wire it into this and it stops that spiking when it boosts apparently. I'm getting fed up of taking this tank off. But before I get into pulling wires and stuff out, I'm just going to double check, make sure that is the right one. So what I'll do is I'll unplug it. Then I'll get the wonderful tune ECU fired up. Right, and then I'll scroll across to there, hit ECU, hit error codes. Barometric pressure sensor. There you go. So that's what that was I just unplugged, which I'm pretty sure is the map sensor. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these wires really long as well so I can actually put a fuel tank on it and have this outside for now because there's a couple of little potentiometers in there you need to adjust to get this right. And then I also need to know what wires to wire into. So here I need to, one of them's a ground and one of them's a positive and the other one's a signal wire. So I need to determine which one's which so I know how to wire this in. That's easy enough. So what I'm going to do is turn the ignition on and then go and get my glasses. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the ignition on. Then we're going to measure these outer two terminals for voltage, which I reckon, at a guess, is the voltage. That's right, five volts. And I've got these connected the right way around, so that means that that first wire is positive, that middle wire is signal and that end wire is negative. So that one there, that's my other wire. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip that middle wire, cause that's the signal wire and that's what we wanna interrupt and adjust with our little unit. And the other two wires, I'm gonna try and strip back without cutting through the wire so that we can get power from it. The proper way to do this would be to pull the pins out and crimp two wires into the pins, but I don't have any other pins, so that's not gonna happen. I used to really enjoy soldering. I don't anymore, just because of my eyes. It's just so not what they used to be and I struggle. And I need to invest in a nice soldering iron because these ones work okay but they've got no thermostat on them they get too hot and they just burn up the solder too quick if you leave them on so you've got to just keep turning it on and off again it's a bit of a pain well that's that bit not the prettiest way of doing this So according to this, I need to take the cover off this guy and I need to adjust these little potentiometers. Right, them two little guys in there. Right, so what I'm doing here is I've got my little multi meat here now because it's got crocodile clips on it. And I've got them two pins bridged out. I've got the positive bridge to the signal wire so that's giving it a constant 5 volts and the multimeter is actually measuring the wire which goes from from the little unit I've just put into the ECU so that's the volt, voltage which is coming out of that unit so to adjust it apparently that top one there I unscrew that that voltage is going down 
So let's set that to five volts. And it says give it half a turn in your favor just to make sure it's good. So there, that's that one. And then the low side is the low voltage. So I think I need to swap this over and give that signal wire a ground. Hopefully that works. Also in the kit, you get this pressure regulator and that needs to go in the fuel tank there. It's just held in with a C-clip, I believe. So, I'll pull it out like that. I've drained the fuel out of this. They look exactly the same. So I guess that's where that goes. So I put a smear of rubber grease around there. Not excessive amounts, otherwise it's gonna get in my fuel. Squeeze him in. Yeah, I guess. Oh, that went in. <laughs> It's got a little pipe on there for a vacuum line, but I'm assuming you just leave that blank. Now this is quite interesting. Before my cylinders are identical, the balance between the throttle bodies is identical, and now there's like 40 difference, okay? So I reckon that's because of this plenum chamber. Like this cylinder here, and because of the design of it, the other cylinder, they're not getting air at the same time this one might scavenge air before it gets to the other one and and stuff like that so at the moment that's probably why they're unbalanced but once it's got boost going in here instead of just the air filter on there that will all change as well I've just got this air filter on in now because I'm going to road test it make sure that the um, map sensor and everything's okay and doesn't put a fault on and that's on there so that my trouser leg doesn't get sucked over the inlet and, and cause the engine to cut out it's actually running a little bit better with that pressure regulator in it. I'm assuming it does alter the mixture a bit because the duty cycle of the injectors won't change, but because they're under more pressure, they're going to squirt more fuel within that duty cycle. So it's not probably warmed up yet. I'll, I'll give it a little bit of a blast. I've got to go put some fuel in it and then we'll see. We've got no engine warning light on. That's, that's good. Right, that's that bit then. Not the most entertaining content, wiring in that map centre and stuff like that, but I'm making these videos so that if someone is actually doing this modification on a trunk twin of some sort, it's good reference for them to know what needs to be done. And I try and get in things where people are going to learn stuff as well, so that might be interesting. So, in the next video, I'm going to be putting the case on which holds the belt drive and bolting the supercharger on. I've actually already done it, it's on there now. Do you want to see it? No, you're going to have to wait till the next video. So, that's going to happen in the next video. Also, you see me doing a lot of stuff and it looks really easy, but I cut out the bits where... I'm actually struggling wiggling with screwdrivers for like five minutes and, and stuff like that because I'm just trying to get the balance right of getting in all the information I need in the videos and not having them drag on too long. So don't forget to like this video, share it if you like and comment and of course have a great day.